Greetings, folks. Welcome to another live reading. I'm Tim Mendes. Uh, tonight, I'm going to be reading you my story, Tasty Treats, from the Erie River Publishing Anthology, Midnight Shadows, which is out today. And I will tell you how you can get hold of a copy of that. Now, as a very special treat for all you people at home, uh, I actually have Michelle River from Erie River Publishing. Hello. Hello. How are you? <laughs> Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. You're still scrambling. <laughs> I am. I'm I'm trying to do like I'm like done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to invite everyone to this watch party on Facebook because I think everybody should be watching this because I love this story so much. Now you see it's funny you say that because this is the one that I was convinced you wouldn't take. <laughs> it's disgusting. Why yeah. wouldn't I want to see this? <laughs> Get in here and watch this. Okay, everybody, I just published that live. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah, so Midnight Shadows. It's, uh, yeah, I'll let you tell the people about it. Yeah, so, well, Midnight Shadows came about um, from, oh, I can hear you through my phone. I'm turning this off now. Um, Midnight Shadows uh, came about, it, it, essentially, it's like a year-long endeavor because we at Erie River do a monthly contest that's themed. So every month, we throw a theme at our authors and we say, write to this theme. And these are the winning stories every month. So we've got 24 awesome stories. Um, last year's like collective theme, I'm going to call it, um, was classic horror tropes so your story was all about carnivals and circuses and then we yeah. got ones about zombies and witches and um tech horror space horror the whole gambit it's really interesting to see the variety, the variety that came into this collection yeah i'm really looking forward to reading through it i really yeah. am because i know there's going to be some because i mean there some of the names in there as well there's some incredible names in there so it's uh you know some incredible authors yeah, uh, like just, you're in there. Well. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> but no, I was, uh, because I was determined to get in. And you <laughs> and I did. just kept submitting every month. <laughs> no, yeah, but no, your story again. Like well, the first time I read it. Cause I even, I even had, to, I had to send it to my sister. Cause I was like, you have to read this story. And she's not a big horror fan. She was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> are you taking this? I'm like, yes, I'm taking this. Oh, excellent. Just, there was just some, it was some, oh, there's not very often people can like catch me unaware and yours did. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so for that, I appreciate it. And I hope everyone enjoys it because it is like, from a very exciting read. Thank you. <laughs> well, like I say, I was convinced that was like, I was like ah, it's too ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. There's a line, but like, I don't, I, I don't feel like you jumped over it. You just like, mm. you hugged it. it? Yeah, it's a tightrope walked it. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes that's where the best stories come from is like, yeah. That hugging line. So. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I get that. The thing is, that's, that's like kind of the story of my writing career because half of the time my stuff is either a bit too weird. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like for all of like, I, I, I'm so familiar to that, to the rejection letter that says, we really enjoyed it, but, <laughs> and it's that yeah. but, isn't it? But it yeah. just doesn't fit. Yeah. At all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> it fits. So just keep doing whatever you're doing because it's working for me. That's for sure. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so you enjoy your read, and at the end, um, uh, just we're doing a what was it? A, a we're going to do a book giveaway, a paper Indeed. paperback. So I'll let you explain uh, what they need to do. Yep. I will figure that out by the time it comes to that. <laughs> but yeah, pay attention right to the end, everybody. Because exactly. you're going to be entered into a draw. This is it. You've got to wait till the end. Yeah. Exactly. No. <laughs> Perfect. 
<laughs> no spoilers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no going on for two minutes and then just go, now nah, I've done that. Yeah, I'll exactly. Oh, back. I'll enter the contest now. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. You now don't know when I'm going to drop the question. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Well, See, thanks for having me. And, like, thanks for coming on. Yeah, it's been great. <laughs> yeah, take care. I hope you enjoy the reading. I hope I don't muck it up too much because it is quite complex in parts. <laughs> so, You'll be fine. Ah, no, I just always do this. I'll no one will know if people. you mess it up anyways. That's my that's kind of my, my deal on this. I just pretend like nothing happened. <laughs> yeah. like, pretend no it was a sound I missed that line. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'll pretend it was a sound effect or something if I go. Yeah. Bleh, bleh. yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. <laughs> Great talking to you. I'll speak to you soon. <laughs> yes. So that was Michelle River from Erie River Publishing. Uh, and like I say, this book is out now. If you want to get hold of it, type in getbook.at forward slash midnight shadows. And like you say, you'd be like uh, we were saying, it contains like you know the pick a pick of the uh, short story co uh, competitions. So you get yeah you get, you're gonna get some interesting stories in there. Uh, as always, I will be doing a short Q and A at the end. So get your questions in, and uh, for now I will just uh, I will go for it. And uh, I hope you enjoy this. Okay, this is Tasty Treats, and it opens with a quote from John Wayne Gacy: "A clown." can get away with murder. On a cold, wet day in November, the circus came to Bettles Cove. It sprung up overnight in a muddy field behind Chaikus Manor. The large yellow and right, uh, red striped tent was visible from the road and was spotted by dozens of pairs of excited eyes on the school bus from the village of High Bend. The news spread through the school like a particularly virulent pox. <clears throat> and by the end of the first lesson, teachers were sick of hearing about it. By lunchtime, they were contemplating burning the tent down. Nothing exciting ever came to Bettles Cove. No fun fairs, or live bands. It was a small fishing town that even the locals struggled to find on the map. All it had was a small run-down pleasure beach and a dilapidated pier. It wasn't the most stimulating of places to grow up, so the news of the circus quickly whipped the town's youngsters into a frenzy. In fact, the only student in the school to greet the news with sullen indifference was 15-year-old Simon Fletcher. He had only recently moved to Bettles Cove from the nearby city of Truro, and he hadn't been in town long enough for the Anui to have set in properly. When his friend John Angove told him about the circus, all he got from Simon was a shrug of the shoulders and a dismissive, so. Come on, Si, John pleaded. It'll be fun. Simon snorted derisively. <laughs> they don't even have animals. It's one of those stupid human circuses. Just a bunch of creepy clowns throwing juggling balls at the audience. I hear they get members of the audience up and throw knives at them, John grinned. Simon snorted again. <sighs> yeah, blunt ones. You don't think there would be any danger, do you? It's all tricks, sleight of hand. None of it's real. John thought for a second. He needed to tempt his friend somehow. John desperately wanted to go but he didn't want to go alone. Not that he would ever admit it to Simon, but John hated clowns. They have candy floss and toffee apples. Simon shot him a dirty look. A diabetic, remember? Oh, yeah. John shook his head at his own stupidity. Sorry, dude. Simon shrugged. He never had much of a sweet tooth in any case. It was type 2 diabetes. He didn't have to inject insulin or anything like that, so it could have been a lot worse. He picked up his rucksack and turned to leave the classroom. The final bell had rung, and John needed to think fast. Um, uh, uh, Sally Green is going. Bingo. Simon stopped mid-stride and looked over his shoulder at his friend. This put a whole new complexion on things. All right, Angove, you're on. 
I'll meet you by the church at six. We can get the bus from there. John grinned like a manic Cheshire cat. Yes, thanks, Si. Simon didn't understand his friend's eagerness one iota, but the thought of Sally Green made him feel all fuzzy in his special places. Just don't embarrass me by volunteering to be sawn in half or some shit, OK? Deal. John carried on grinning as he threw on his coat and skulked out the classroom after his lanky friend. The two boys went their separate ways at the school gate. John to the Dockside estate and Simon to a large barn conversion out in the sticks. Simon's thoughts were consumed with what he was going to wear. He couldn't mess up this golden opportunity to impress Sally Green. John, on the other hand, couldn't stop thinking about candy floss. One of the banners on the roadside claimed that this particular circus troupe offered the best candy floss in Europe. John was fixing to put that audacious claim to the test. Roll up, roll up to Mordesian Circus. Simon winced as the irritating clown on the unicycle barked in his ear through a megaphone. Simon hated clowns as much as John, but not because of fear. Simon just found them incredibly annoying. That goofy, fake laugh that a lot of them put, put on just to make him, made him want to slap the stupid grin off their faces. Step inside to witness death-defying displays that will thrill, chill and excite you. Nothing was thrilling or exciting about standing in a long queue in the pouring rain, especially while your best boots sank into the mud. Simon cursed himself for agreeing to attend the circus. Sarah Green was miles ahead of them, so they wouldn't even be sitting remotely close to each other. And knowing his luck, he would end up with a stinker of a cold. Though right now, a block noise, block nose, would have been a small mercy. The air was thick with the cloying smell of sickly sweet candy floss and congealed toffee popcorn. John's hand was coated in the sticky popcorn gloop, and Simon winced with revulsion as his friend began licking it off his stubby fingers. Get your free tasty treat before you enter and experience the best candy floss in all of Europe. This latest announcement elicited a mighty cheer from the snaking line of fidgeting children and bored parents. Simon rolled his eyes. Further down the line, the crowd passed through an old, rusty turnstile adjacent to the ticket booth. On the other side was another clown. This one was handing out small cardboard cups with a swirl of bright pink floss inside. You can have mine, Simon said sullenly. You can have a little taste, can't you? John asked. You've got to try a little. It's the best candy floss in Europe, see? He pointed at a huge, garishly coloured board and blazoned with the bold claim. Says so right there. Simon's left palm met his forehead in a blatant display of despair. John really was a gullible prat at times. That's just a market employee, you muppet. How do you know? John shot back with a petulant smirk. Don't knock something or two. You've tried it, my granny always said. Simon huffed. <sighs> Fine. Just a little taste. Then I can tell trading standards about this bunch of frauds. John bristled at this statement. Simon's constant running down of things he enjoyed was starting to grate on his nerves. You can be such a miserable wanker at times. Before their bickering could escalate to the calling of names, punching of arms and mocking of mothers, the line started to move. John fished the £10 note his mother had given him out of his overly tight jeans, handed it to the clown in the ticket booth. Two, please, said politely. The clown took his money, gave him change and stamped his hand with a sinister looking clown in smudged black ink. It definitely looked more pogo than Coco. Simon flinched when a hand touched his to give him a stamp. Something about her cold, clammy fingers made his flesh crawl. He managed a forced smile as he moved along. Though the clown had spotted his discomfort, 
and she seemed to delight in it. Her yellow eyes, contact lenses of some kind, flashed with an almost sadistic uh, glee. It was only now that he looked at the clowns properly that he noticed just how sinister they actually were. He never found clowns the least, this least bit frightening, but there was something feral about this troop. All of them had an almost canine aspect to their faces. Their grease paint was elaborate and looked as though it had been designed to distract from their features rather than enhance them. Tasty treat. Simon nearly jumped out of his skin as another clown stuck a pot of, pot of floss under his nose. Eh? He stammered in reply. The clown's mouth hung slack, displaying a row of gnarled yellow fangs. You got tasty treat. He barked. His voice was rasping and harsh, like it'd been chewing sandpaper. Take. It's free. This sounded more like a demand than an offer. Simon gingerly took the cup and attempted a weak smile. Uh, thanks. He looked around. Everyone was tucking into the free floss. More ecstatic grins. You, you try, the clown insisted. Simon smiled again and listed the cup to his mouth. What the hell, he decided. Just a little won't hurt. Flicking the tip of his tongue out like a snake tasting the air. Simon brought the floss to his mouth and licked the tip. Holy shit. Flavour exploded on his tongue. It was unlike anything he had ever tasted. He had always imagined candy floss to be sickly, overpowering. But this had the perfect flavour balance. The corners of his jaw started to tingle as he began to salivate. His best candy floss in Europe, yes! The clown's eyes danced with delight as Simon nodded emphatically. You go in now. Show begin. The clown took a sweeping bow and gestured to the flap in the tent. <clears throat> Simon hummed and sucked the flavour off his lips. In front of him, the tent flaps opened and he was swallowed by the warmth and smells of the circus. Brightly coloured lights dazzled and disorientated him as he stepped over the threshold. The joyful music rose and swelled between his ears. His whole body tingled as though he had just inhaled paint fumes. The candy floss was indeed a revelation. What do you think of the candy floss? John's nasal vo voice broke the spell in an instant. Um, uh, what? Simon shook his head from side to side. Yeah, it's, it's not bad. John reached over and took the cup from his friend. Give me that. We don't want you going into a coma, do we? Simon looked at his friend. For a fraction of a second, he could have broken John's nose for taking away the tasty treat. He took a deep breath and thought rationally. Yeah, all right, go for it. John didn't respond to his comment and simply commenced shoveling the pink floss down his gullet. The interior of the tent was just as brightly coloured as the exterior. Panels of red and yellow canvas alternated down an entranceway. We seemed to picture a slightly skewed angle. Though the tent had been erected on a perfectly level field, the floor seemed to dip and lurch as though the circus was burrowing into the ground. The closer they got to the arena, the more outrageous the angles of the tent became. On more than one occasion, Simon had been forced to grab hold of a tent pole to steady himself. Nobody else seemed to have any difficulty navigating the labyrinthine passage, however. Check out these portraits, Simon nudged John and pointed with revulsion. The corridor was lined with grotesque portraits of oddly misshapen clowns. Some of them were so twisted that they walked almost on all fours. Talk about a freak show, Simon shuddered. John's eyes twinkled. I think they're beautiful. Simon looked in utter bewilderment at his friend. John wore a euphoric smile that seemed to be firmly welded onto his freckled features. Looking around, Simon noticed that everyone in the procession towards the arena wore the same exact expression. He felt like he was standing amongst a production line of particularly creepy mannequins. Something was wrong here, very wrong. 
A feeling of deep unease started to gnaw away at Simon's lower intestine like a hungry rodent. Everyone was acting like they'd been drugged. And even Simon felt docile and lightheaded. He'd always thought that religion was supposed to be the opiate of the masses, not candy floss. As they moved steadily to water onwards, Simon was suddenly hit with an urge to flee, just to get the hell out of there. He couldn't quite put his finger on why, but he was slowly overwhelmed by a feeling of impending doom. He tried to turn and walk out, but the tightly packed column of grinning humanity prevented any deviation from the forward surge. Simon tapped frantically on his friend's shoulder. John, he hissed, something fucking weird's going on here. John continued to grin. Isn't it magical? Look at these beautiful clowns. He pointed to the widening aperture that led to the arena. The entrance was flanked by two hulking clowns that looked more dog than man. They seemed to be checking everyone as they entered the arena. But for what? Simon watched in horror as they methodically sniffed everyone as they passed. Then it struck him. They were checking that everyone had consumed the floss. Thinking fast, Simon snatched the almost empty container back from John, dipped his forefinger in it and wiped the sticky substance around his lips while taking the utmost care not to ingest it. Next, he mimicked the crowd's glassy-eyed vacancy and manic grins, praying that his deception would work. The larger of the two clowns leaned forward and stuck its twitching snout into Simon's face. It took every fibre of his being to stop himself lashing out as the clown sniffed his breath. Its yellow eyes glared into his as it scrutinised his reactions. Simon kept staring at the back of John's head. He didn't know what would happen if he flinched. Nothing good, he imagined. A glob of sticky drool dripped from the corner of the clown's twisted grin. Hung there for a few agonising seconds before dropping with a disgusting splat onto the toe cap of one of Simon's boots. The stench of the clown's breath was making his eyes water. Simon was seconds away from breaking when he was finally shoved forwards and allowed to enter the big top. Simon took a deep breath, then quickly wished he hadn't. The air was heavy with simulated smoke that tasted like soap. It was so thick that it completely obscured the floor. And judging from the metallic clatter they were walking on, it was metal grates of some kind. Green and red lights flashed in the smoke, making navigation tricky. Simon reached out and held a metal guide rail that led up into the stalls. John and the others didn't seem at all phased by the ambience of the tent. They just filed down the aisles and took their seats like well-behaved cattle. When the line stopped, Simon took the seat behind him, noting that there were three rows back and off to the left side with wide, bewildered eyes. He gazed around at the bizarre interior of the tent. It was much smaller than he expected, and there could only have been 50 or 60 people in attendance. The floor sloped down in, in a funnel shape and terminated in a circular performance area. Below them was a circular board, complete with rusty manacles and suspicious looking brown stains. Dry ice had settled in the arena, and other strange objects lurked in shadow. Before his eyes could adjust to the lights, the tent was suddenly plunged into darkness. The piped in music rose to a deafening level as a drum roll built to a crescendo. The crowd gasped in perfect unison as a cymbal crashed, and a dazzling spotlight beamed down and illuminated the clown on the unicycle with the megaphone. <clears throat> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Medigian's Human Circus, the clown howled. The audience roared in appreciation as Simon looked around for the nearest exit. We hope you enjoyed our tasty treats. They were made by the great ghoul, Mordigian himself. The crowd stood and delivered a rapturous round of applause. 
And the best thing about them, there's more. As the crowd whooped and cheered, a small platoon of clowns with trays strapped to their bodies moved roughly amongst the audience and jammed a large tub of a floss into everybody's hand. Simon took his without comment and joined in a mindless show of delight that raged around him. As everybody returned to their seats and started to eat the addictive floss, Simon pretended to join in. The clowns were carefully watching for anyone who wasn't completely under, spe under the spell of the insidious sweet. Without further ado, can we have some volunteers? Everyone in the tent shot their arms in the air and began to chant, Pick me, pick me, pick me. Simon joined in, desperately praying that they didn't pick him. The spotlight circled around the room and Simon's heart pounded as the clowns started herding people into the ring. There were ten people in total, and each was led to a different device. One man was loaded into a cannon, while one was strapped to a bed of nails. Others were driven up ladders and pushed out onto tight ropes. Simon let out a yelp of alarm when he noticed he was being strapped to the ominous disc. It was Sarah Green. The unicycle clown pedalled over to the disc and produced a large axe from behind it. The crowd went, ooh, as he pedalled back to the starting point. Can we have a drum roll, please? The crown grinned menacingly. Another clown grabbed the handle on the side of the disc and gave it a good yank. The crowd went, ah, as the disc started to spin round and round and round it went. The clown gave the axe a playful swing, then hoisted it behind his head, ready to throw. Simon started to panic and fidget in his seat. All over the arena, the restrained members of the audience were joined by weapon-wielding clowns. The drums started to pound faster and faster, louder and louder. The lights flashed and danced. The smoke and dry ice swirled. <coughs> the crowd roared with appreciation as all ten volunteers were dispatched in perfect unison. One man was impaled on a bed of nails by a hulking brute with a sledgehammer. Another was fired by a can from a cannon into a pile of bricks and broken glass. People were tossed from the tightrope, while others were skewered with knives, swords, and even a javelin. Poor Sarah Green was nearly neatly decapitated by an expertly thrown axe. Simon screamed. Everyone in the audience <coughs> fell instantly silent and glared in Simon's direction. The clown on the unicycle pointed at him with a gnarled finger. Someone hasn't taken their medicine. Grab him. As John and several other members of the audience reached out to grab him, Simon dropped to his knees, then slid under the seat. There was a short drop to the ground below. He landed awkwardly and twisted his ankle. Treat clowns, the ringmaster boomed over the raucous music at the clowns with the snack trays. Find our unwilling participant. The footsteps started to pound on the wood and metal bleachers as the clowns started to come for him. Now the clown had regained his jovial tone. Can we have some more volunteers? Pick me, pick me, pick me. The chants were deafening. Simon limped towards the rear of the tent and scrambled behind one of the base bins as the first of the clowns appeared under the seating. It discarded its tray and the top half of its costume, revealing a hunched, scabrous body with tufts of wiry hair. It sniffed the air in an attempt to locate Simon. Luckily, the air reeked of freshly spilt blood and candy floss, masking Simon's fear. It skulked off in the opposite direction, and Simon was finally able to take a breath. He had no idea how long he'd been holding it. His mind was in turmoil. How could this be happening? He found himself gazing in confusion at the floor. It looked as though the circus had burrowed itself into the earth. It sloped downwards towards a vast pit under the arena. There was a walkway that corkscrewed around it and went down, presumably to the bottom. The floor of the arena was entirely constructed of metal grates. Blood dripped down from the punctured and broken cadavers 
like foul rain. Disgruntled barking from the opposite side of the seating arena announced the position of his hunters. Whatever these creatures were, they had a savage intelligence and were waiting at the exits. This left only one route, down. As he made his way across the blood-soaked earth, the crowd above started to whoop and stamp their feet in anticipation of the next atrocity. Watch as my assistant, Marco the Mutilator, soars the woman in half. Simon averted his eyes and ran for his life as the victim's blood gashed into the pit. His feet clanked on the metal gantry as he raced down the spiralling path into the rancid pit. Risking a glance behind him, Simon was glad to see that none of the clowns were following him. They obviously didn't think he'd be so foolhardy to go in that direction. This gave Simon pause. What could possibly be down there? The slope ended in a canvas corridor that wound around a massive pool of blood. Simon gagged, recoiled in horror when he saw that there was something ghastly swimming in the blood. It looked like an enormous grave worm with a huge gaping maw fringed with rope-like tentacles tipped with fanged mouths. They hungrily sucked up the blood. The corpulent monstrosity quivered in delight as more blood lashed down in a mighty torrent. There was another tunnel off to the left, which appeared to snake into the bowels of Bettel's Cove. The town was riddled with old mines, caves and smugglers' tunnels. The impossible tent must somehow join up with them. How could this monstrous structure have been built in a single evening? Simon couldn't wrap his head around what he was seeing. It was too horrible for his mind to process. Simon quietly began to edge around the pit. Suddenly, the sound of footsteps stopped and dead in his tracks. He pressed himself into a fold in the canvas as a hulking cloud appeared from the other passage. It was dragging the top half of a freshly slain woman. With a roar of exertion, it swung the body into the pit. The vile creature attacked it with gusto as hungry mouths snapped and salivated. There you go, my Lord Mordigian. Tasty treats. The clown gave a throaty chuckle, then moved around to the rear of the monstrosity holding a bucket. Simon watched in horror as the creature began to excrete strands of a sticky, thread-like substance. It was similar to how silkworms produced silk, only this was far more disgusting. The clown used two sticks to grasp the substance and weave it into a ball. Horror gripped Simon's soul as the awful realization dawned. This was how they made the candy floss. This was too much. Simon gagged, wretched, giving his hiding place away. The clown snarled as the loping creature raced around to his position, snapping his canine muzzle with his yellow eyes blazing in fury. It lunged for Simon, arms outstretched and talon-like nails ready. Thinking fast, Simon drove his shoulder into the creature's midriff and lunged with all his strength. The rugby tackle sent the clown staggering backwards. He lost his footing on the edge of the pit and splashed backwards into the pool of gore. Mordigian roared with delight at his new meal. And in seconds, the clown had been devoured. Simon ran as fast as his twisted ankle would allow. He ran in a haze of adrenaline and madness. The tunnel seemed to go on forever, through, though eventually he reached a steep staircase carved into the wall of a rocky cavern. Scrambling for his life, Simon made his ascent. There you are! John yelped in glee just as Simon appeared from a darkened passage next to the line of disgusting portaloos at the entrance of the tent. I've been looking for you everywhere. John, we need to get the fuck out of here right now. Simon was crazed. He grabbed his friend by the arm and tried to pull him towards the exit. He was stopped by the appearance of several clowns, 
they were surrounded. And two of them grabbed Simon by the arms and held him tightly as John picked up a tub of candy floss. You've got to try it. It's the best candy floss in Europe. A little taste won't hurt. John grinned as he stuffed the evil confectionery into Simon's screaming mouth. The town of Bettles Cove awoke the following morning to discover that around 50 of its denizens had run away to join the circus. This didn't come as much of a shock. Many of the townsfolk fully expected it. All signs of the circus had gone by dawn and the field looked as though it had never been touched. Most people were jealous of those that had vanished. After all, it was a fine local tradition and it was one that many wished to join in. You see, Wodigian Circus originated in Battles Cove and every 10 years it returned to recruit some new local blood to keep the acts fresh. The end. Thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. <sighs> yeah. And there you go. That was Tasty Treats from the Eerie River Publishing Anthology, Midnight Shadows, which you can get hold of if I can find the right button. There. Let's get booked.app forward slash Midnight Shadows. Now, let's have a look if there's any questions. So, yeah, get some in. Uh, yeah, Michelle, thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on, Michelle. It's great. Uh, Neen says, columns of grinning humanity are such brilliant way with words. <laughs> Cheers, thanks. Uh, yeah. Oh. Oh, there we go. We've got a, I don't, what is that? Bizarreness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Man, I'm starving. Oh, you want some candy floss? Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah, excellent. Thank you. Yeah, Chris says nice. And a sick face. Yeah, well, we did. We did. Michelle has warned you all. Uh, like, um, it was a great compliment uh, when we we talked once, and I, I was I was like expressing my um, surprise that it that it that it won. <laughs> yeah, it's creepy and disgusting. Which I think is a perfect description of that story. <laughs> Question, what the actual absolute fuck? <laughs> Do I like candy floss and clowns? Well, candy floss, I'm actually type 2 diabetic, so that's death. And clowns, no. I'm not a fan. Uh, I'm not really scared of them. I, 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 I do find them quite creepy, but I think, I think <laughs> that's because I always associate them with like the guy who I did the quote of earlier, uh, John Wayne Gacy. You know, there's something a bit, you know, clouds. <laughs> okay, let's have a look if there's any more questions. Right, okay, so if you guys want to win a copy of the book, uh, tell me, right, uh, about the creepiest thing you can think of that would happen, that could happen at a circus. If you can't do that, Tell me, just tell me about whether you like clowns or not. But I'd like to I'd like to hear about what you your nightmare of clowns. Just just give us something like that, you know. Sorry, it's not a great question, but I'm, I can't think of one. So yeah, yeah, just tell me, yeah, just tell me. Do you ha do you hate clowns and why? There we go. Do you like clowns or not, and why? Perfect. Okay. Uh, hi, Jennifer. Thanks for joining me. Hi, Neen, all the way from Australia. Yeah, excellent. Ah, Mr. Green. There he is. <laughs> oh, that picture makes me giggle. Uh, that's actually quite appropriate because this Erie River Publishing, this is one of their sticker designs. You can actually get your mug on it. And that's what with David Green looking like a serial killer. Uh, <laughs> ah, nice one, Rent. Yeah, good evening, mate. Good to see you. Uh, da, 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 da. Just have a... <laughs> excellent. Uh, love it. Never as horror made me laugh in wanton glee. Oh, excellent. There we go. I like that. I like that. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Karen, <laughs> good, good. I really hoped that Simon was going to escape. Does anyone get out your stories alive or sane? Um, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> There's actually a really funny HP Lovecraft meme. It says, uh, it's a picture of HP Lovecraft. It's just his face. It says at the top, and they lived, they all lived happily ever. Only kidding, they're all dead or insane. And that's kind of the, <laughs> kind of coming to Lovecraft school on that. I'm sure there is a few that survive. And a uh, few that probably are sane, but not many. They're very, very, very few and far between. <laughs> okay. Arneen says, I hate clowns. I snuck into a living room when my older sisters were watching It. Nope. <laughs> I, I'm assuming that's the Tim Curry It. Yeah. Oh, that would kind of great. <laughs> Hiya, Georgie. You want a balloon? I, I love Tim. The thing is, I liked the remakes. But you're never going to beat Tim Curry as, as Pennywise, in my opinion. Uh, that was just such an awesome film. Excellent. Yep. Yeah, so if you want to be in a chance with winning a copy of the book, just like Neen just did, tell us whether you like whether you're scared of clowns or not and why. OK, thank you for all for joining me. Uh, and thank you. Uh, thank you to Michelle River again uh, for joining in. It's quite interesting, quite nice to have a little guest. Uh, again, if you want to get hold of the uh, book, there you go. It's getbook.app forward slash Midnight Shadows. Along the bottom, that's eerieriverpublishing.com. Uh, check them out. They have some great books. So in um, The Course from the Forest, Volume 1 or 2, of Course from the Sky. They've got a load of great stuff coming out. A load of really, really good stuff coming out. Uh, so you want to check them out if you like your horror. Uh, they're also doing some dark fantasy stuff as well. Um, and the series of books by uh, Mr. Beardy himself, David Green, um, which I forget the name of because I'm an idiot. Um, so, yeah, if you want to check them out, it's all going to be on the website. And if you want to check out our website, my website, it's timmendyswriter.wordpress.com. All of my live videos and interviews and all that other sort of nonsense. It's all in there under the videos tag. There's loads of them there now. So if you're bored or you want to punish somebody, make them watch it. OK, <laughs> and while you're there, subscribe and like my YouTube channel, because that'd be awesome. Thank you very much. I will see you very, very soon with another live reading. And I've also got a load of bunch of interviews and stuff coming up. Thank you all. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>